Everybody is trying to make their website as fast and responsive as possible, but one of the best things you can do for your user's experience is slow it down. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name is Kyle, and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. And today I want to talk about how slowing down your website can actually make it a better user experience. And I have a ton of different examples. I'm going to cover all of them. I have tutorials on linked in the description and cards. And the first one I want to talk about is this Wordle clone that I've created. So everybody knows Wordle is a really popular word game. And one of the things that makes it so popular is how enjoyable it is to play. So if we just type in a word here and hit enter, you notice that it's going to flip over the tiles one by one, revealing them to me one after the other. Now, as soon as I hit enter for entering a word, for example, if I hit enter right now, immediately the computer knows what the result is. It knows which tile should be green, which one should be gray, and which one should be yellow. But that's not very fun if we just make it appear instantly. Instead, by slowly flipping them, it adds suspense and makes the game more enjoyable. And this is one of the things that really makes Wordle so fun. Another similar game to Wordle is this Quartal game, which is just like Wordle, but with four words at the same time. And when I hit enter, it instantly shows me the results. And this is a much less enjoyable experience because I don't have to wait for the response. There's no suspense. There's no enjoyment. It just gives me the response. It's a little bit overwhelming in my opinion because everything appears all at once. While with Wordle, it's slowly flipping them over one by one. So it's much easier to kind of take everything in as I go. This right here is what I'm talking about when I'm saying slow things down. A computer is instant, but when you send your results and responses to users, you shouldn't always make it instantaneous. Another great example of this is this 2048 game that I've created. I'll link the tutorial for it in the cards and description, and also I have a live version of the site you can try playing yourself. But essentially, we have a bunch of animations here. As you can see, it's showing an animation for how the game is played, and it's slow. It's not instantaneous. Also, if I play the game, when I move these tiles, you can see that they're slowly sliding across my screen. That gives a much more enjoyable experience. Now, if I wanted, I could actually take the code for this and this one line right here, this transition line, this is the one single line of code that is giving us that awesome experience that we have on the right hand side. So if I just save this real quick and I come back over here, now when I click, you can see all the tiles instantly move into place. And well, the computer knows instantly where to move them, but if that happens for me, it's really hard for me to tell exactly what's going on when things just jump across the screen instantaneously. So slowing things down and showing an animation not only is a more enjoyable experience, but also helps the user understand what exactly is going on. Another great use case for this is let's say that we have like a finish date. You can see we have this nice ripple and then this stat screen shows up. Well, if I got to the lose state of this game, this is technically slow because as soon as I make the final move, the game knows immediately that I've lost and I could just immediately pop up this modal. But by making it slow and showing that ripple animation, it's more enjoyable for the user and helps them understand that they lost and here are the final results. But this doesn't just have to apply to games. These examples have been based on games, but there's examples for actual main websites. Now I know this is really ugly, but this is a tutorial for showing how you can transition between pages. I'll link it in the cards and description for you. But as I click these different links, you can see one page fades out and the next one scrolls in. And you can see different pages have different animations. And while technically this is slower than just immediately showing the content on the next page, it is something that enjoyable for the user. It gives them a little bit more enjoyment when they use the site and it slows things down so they can easily digest the information as it comes in. Another example of this is actually making the page appear on the screen after it loads. So when I click refresh here, you can see everything slowly animates in. I could just make the entire content of the page appear all at once, but again, that's overwhelming and not as enjoyable for the user. So by making it slowly animate in, and you can even go further by making it as you scroll down the page, different parts of the page animate in, you see that really commonly in a lot of sites, it makes it so it's easier to digest what's happening, and it also draws the user's attention. If you make something animate onto the page, it draws their eye to that thing. So it's a really easy way to make your user experience better and direct them where you want on your page. And again, if you want a tutorial on this project, I'll have them all linked in the cards and description. Another thing that we can do right here, let me just refresh this, is having, for example, a submit button. Normally when you click a submit button, that's it, that's all that happens. But by clicking it and having, you know, like a loading progress state and a finished progress state, this is a great way to show the user, hey, you click this button, it is now doing something. And then once that thing is done, it can say, okay, this was successful, the check mark, or it can give you a big X and say, oh, this was not successful. So by slowing this down, instead of just instantly being like, okay, you click submit button, we're done. It's saying, okay, now it's loading. Now here's the finish state. It gives you kind of a nice little animation that tells the user what's happening. And again, slows it all down for them. Again, tutorial on this in the cards and description down below. Now, the very last example that I wanna talk about is like a loading state for your page. 
For example, if you have information that can't come in very quickly, you need to show a loading state for them because otherwise the user doesn't actually know that the thing is loading. They just say a white page and they don't know why it's missing all the content. So, you know, having like a skeleton loading animation, which I have a tutorial on in the cards and description, is a great way for you to tell the user, hey, information is coming, just be patient. And you're showing this to them and it allows them to know, okay, you know what, I'm just going to wait here. It's doing something behind the scenes. And that's what a lot of these things are for. Either A, in like the Wordle and 2480 example, we're essentially saying, okay, you know what, here's what's happening. We're gonna slow it down for you so you can see what's happening, digest it, and have a more enjoyable experience. In these later examples here, we're giving the user additional information by slowing these things down. We're saying, okay, here's an animation that shows you things are loading, or here's an animation that says it was successful and that it's loading your submit. And on these examples, we're again just slowing things down a little bit. Instead of popping up all the information at once, which overwhelms the user, we're showing them bits and pieces at a time, which allows them to take it in one by one, which is really useful. So the next time you're making a site, remember that speed is not always the best factor. And if you wanna see tutorials on these projects, I'm gonna link a couple of them over here and the rest are all gonna be linked down in the description below. With that said, thank you very much for watching and have a good day.